So today we will discuss about the topic conventional hardening. So conventional hardening is applicable for steel with the carbon percentage ranging from 0.1 to 2 percent. The objective of conventional hardening to harden the steel to the maximum level by austenite to martensite transformation. So the objective of conventional hardening is to convert the austenite phase into the martensitic phase. Second objective of conventional hardening is to increase the wear resistance and cutting ability of tools. So it will improve the wear resistance and cutting ability of the different types of the tools used in the cutting operations. The next is the process. Conventional hardening, the first process in conventional hardening is a heating process. So here the hypoeutectoid steels are heated A3 plus 50, at A3 plus 50 degree Celsius temperature and hyperutectoid steel is heated at A1 plus 50 degree Celsius temperature. So this steel hypoeutectoid steel contains 0.18% carbon and hypoeutectoid steel contains 2% of the hyperutectoid steel contains 2% of the carbon. So this is the first process of conventional hardening that is a heating process. Second is a holding process in conventional hardening. So here for a definite period of the time, the material will kept or the steel will kept for that temperature constant temperature for particular period of the time. So either A3 plus 50 degree Celsius and A1 plus 50 degree Celsius temperature. So this is the second step in conventional hardening. Next third step in conventional hardening is cooling process. So with the rate just exceeding the critical cooling rate of the particular steel, the cooling is carried out. Next step is a tempering process. So after conventional hardening, the tempering, so the material will again heated to a certain temperature, then uh, hold at that temperature for a particular period of the time, then uh, pull the material to the room temperature so that retain austenite can be removed and the desired material properties can be achieved. So in conventional hardening, hypoeutectoid steels are always hardened above A3 and not between A1 and A3 temperature. So the, we know the various temperature range that is A1 is a 727 degrees Celsius, A3 a 910 degrees Celsius temperature. So in for hypoeutectoid steel, that is nothing but a steel with a carbon percentage more than 0.18 will always harden above the A3 temperature, means it will heat it above A3 temperature, then cool it to the room temperature and not between the A1 and A3 means it will not heat it between the temperature 727 to 910 degree Celsius. Then hyperutectoid steels are always hardened between A1 temperature and ACM temperature. So A1 temperature is, uh, we know, 727 degree Celsius and ACM temperature is 1147 degree Celsius. So hyperutectoid steel means the steel with the carbon percentage up to 2% are always hardened between the A1 and ACM temperature. <coughs> Next, hyperutectoid steels are never hardened from above ACM temperature. Means 1147 degree Celsius temperature 
So about that temperature, the hyper eutectoid steel are never harder. So these are the three conventional hardening steps for hypo eutectoid steel, for hyper eutectoid steel with the A1 and ACM temperature, and for hypo hyper eutectoid steel with the ACM temperature. Then next is the selection of quenching media for hardening. So critical cooling rate may, must be exceeded for hardening, the cooling rate should be the higher. Then critical cooling rate depends on more on the allying elements and less upon carbon content. So this is the second important condition. Then for alloy steels, less cooling rate, that is air cooling is used for the hardening. For high carbon steel, slightly critical cooling rate, that is oil quenching is used or preferred. That is the oil is used as a medium. Then third is a medium carbon steel, more critical cooling rate than the high carbon steel. So water or brine solution is used as a quenching media. So these are the three quenching medias used for the hardening. So for alloy steel, it is air cooling as a quenching media. For high carbon steel, oil quenching is the oil is the media. And for medium carbon steel, water or brine solution is used as a quenching media. Next is hardening methods. So two types of hardening methods are there. So first is a time quenched, that is nothing but interrupt quenching. And second one is a mark tempering. So here in time quenched tempering, so material is going to heat it by using the water quench. So here you can show in this diagram, the curve, this curve up to this point or this temperature, just before the starting of the Martin cytic start temperature, the cooling media is a water. And after that, cooling media going to change in the Martin cytic phase, the cooling media will be the oil. So here, this curve represents the oil quenching or coolant media is a oil. So for water quenching, the hardening rate is uh, quite faster. And also in oil quench, the cooling rate is uh, faster. So here, the time will shown by the x-axis and on y-axis, there will be the temperature. So starting from the A1 temperature or AC3 temperature line, the cooling starts. So it will bypass the nose of the TTT diagram. So this is the time temperature diagram, time versus temperature TTT, time temperature transformation diagram. So here in this diagram, A represents the austenite, alpha is the alpha pyrite, and C is the cementite. So here there will be the mixture of austenite and alpha pyrite. Here is the mixture of austenite, alpha pyrite, and cementite. And here mixture of alpha ferrite and cementite that is a perlite. So here Martin cytic start temperature line MS and Martin cytic finish line temperature MF. So here you can observe austenite gets transformed into the Martin site. This is called as a hardening. So here in between Martin cytic start temperature and finish temperature or end temperature, there will be the mixture of austenite and Martin site. So below the Martin cytic finish line, the phase existing is the Martin site. So time quench is nothing but interrupted quenching. So initially there will be the water quenching. After some period of time, there will be the for some period of time, oil quenching is the use. So this is called as interrupted quenching. Next one is a mark tempering. So here in mark tempering. You can see in this diagram again, there will be the sudden cooling by using the water as a coolant media. After that, soaking time is given. So just before the Martin cytic start temperature. So here, before Martin cytic start temperature, the temperature remains constant for a particular period of time. After that, again, cooling is done to the room temperature. 
So in martensitic phase, before start of the martensitic phase, there will be the tempering process occurs. So that's why this process is called as a mart tempering. So there will be more refined structure is obtained for the martensite with the less amount of uh, austenite or retained austenite. So this is the diagram which represents the mart tempering. So thank you for the watching the method of hardening method for the steel.